James Kaufman, World News Report today, October 27th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, I know very few of us, including myself, know exactly what they're doing over at CERN. But we also realize that they're up to no good, or they would clearly explain what they were up to. Well, they have reached instantaneous luminosity. And they had the machine, the Large Hadron Collider, at full power. Now it's down to just below full power, but it was at full power. And we continue into instantaneous luminosity. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because they're working with proton physics. And we're in the middle of a proton storm that really doesn't line up with the X flare that we had yesterday. Or the X3.33, the warning flare that we had two days ago. And I think that this is what's causing the proton storm. I think that because any time they turn the beams down, the proton storm starts to dissipate. And when they turn the beams back on, the proton storm continues to rise to new highs, which is exactly what occurred overnight again. Now, we've had no solar flares whatsoever. I will show you that that could have kept the proton storm increasing. And that's both the 10 million volt line it's broken the space weather alert threshold. We have the 50 million volt line moving up in that direction. These are all GOES 18. We have the 100 million volt line now moving north. And we have the quote unquote brand new 500 million volt line. It's like it's also starting to move. Now, last night, I showed you this area here where we were headed up and they turned the machine off and well the proton storm started to dissipate and then they turned the machine right back on during our live. I have everything playing on two computers on my right and I said wait a minute they've turned it back on and the thing's headed back up. Well ladies and gentlemen every time they do turn it back on and especially if they put it on full power You'll see these large rises. Look how strong this proton storm has become now. From an X 1.86 flare that occurred right here at 6 UTC time, right? We were already in a proton storm. Supposedly, this is even funnier, from something that occurred at 4 UTC time back here. But the problem is, is if the flare occurred at 4 UTC time, and it was the X3.3, very little happened, although they had the machine booting up, and they had the beams going, they were nowhere near full power. But it continued to rise, and then all of a sudden started rising more and more, and all of a sudden at this point, after it rose, uh, well, four, uh, 20 six hours after the x3.3 flare it was already at this point between six and seven we had our x1.86 flare and that really didn't affect the rise in protons here it was only affected once they turned cern on full power here finally then they turned it off it went down then they turned it on and then they turned it on full power then they shut it off it started to dissipate then they turned it back on. We all saw that on our live show. And once it's reached full power, well, here we are. Now, again, we're at instantaneous luminosity. And that does not sound good, right? The illuminated ones, as in Illuminati. Jumping over to our GOES X-ray flux, I want to show you that the spikes in the proton flux and now the S2 proton storm don't match up to what's going on with these flares. When we had the X3.33, I told you regularly those are warning shots to people in the know saying that, uh, well, saying something to them. And by in the know, I mean 
well, part of these elite groups. So this is about 3.30 UTC time. And we saw nothing happen after the X3.3. That same line slowly continued up, and that's on the 24th. And then we had no activity, but the line continued up. And you would think that when we had the X1.86 flare here on the 26th, at right around 5.30, 6 UTC time, that would be when we saw a spike. But we've seen spikes intermittently only when they turn this CERN machine on full power. Now, we're in an S2 proton storm, and they're doing proton experiments with this thing. And they're using the full power of the strongest machine in the world, which is 15 tab or trillion volts. I've never seen them really go to full power except for today. Uh, you can see that there's no additional flaring whatsoever. We're back in C territory and we don't see an M flare or anything else. But when we look at our proton storm and we'll look at the, the 24th, here we are at 3.30. You can see that here's the big x 3.3 you'd think the spike would start to move up here but it doesn't they start warming up the machine the beams are on medium power and as they warm them up well they continue up nothing occurs whatsoever right until look they continue up very slowly after that flare ridiculous right and then here at 6 utc time we would think we would see a huge spike right there because the x-rays are at the speed of light, right? We see it on our x-ray absorption. And if you'll remember, I question why the X1.86 flare laid down such a small radio alternation and signature on our x-ray uh, absorption prediction center. I said it looked like an M1 flare when it hit, and it should have been Earth-facing. There's no spike anywhere in this time period. The spike happens about seven hours later when they have the machine turned on full power. When they turn the machine off, it takes a dip. They turn the machine on, it starts spiking up, and it starts spiking more as they put it on full power. We were live when they turned it off, and it started going down to prove my hypothesis. And then we were also live all last night for an hour and a half when I showed y'all they turned it on and it started going back up. Now, they've had it on full power for some time. These big jumps here look like they're full power of CERN. And now we're in instantaneous illuminosity, whatever the, that means. Very, very strange. I believe that this proton storm is man-made. I don't believe that it was caused by the quote-unquote X-flares that we had. I already questioned the X-flares. There's no proton storm showing up on LASCO, i.e. the little white dots that we always see on LASCO C3 during a proton storm. And we're in a very strong one. I should be able to go right now to LASCO and see little white dots everywhere. Can I? I doubt it. Now, I do want to point this comet out headed right for the sun here. Unbelievable. We'll take a look at that. It doesn't look like it's reached there, although this is lagging information. When it does, we could have another X flare. You can see it lighting up, moving in. We don't see any speckles. These speckles are not proton storms. These are just, well, uh, small space rocks moving around in front of Lasco. But there is a comet inbound there. I'd like to point that out. Collision in all IPs. Illumination signals needed from all experiments. Very, very scary. Uh, let me just say that it looks like they're starting to power this down. And if our proton storm starts to dissipate, you can see they've come off full power. This is the strongest I've ever seen the machine on. 1.8, 1.9, E11 intensity, and it's really down a little bit to 6,800 GeV, 
which is 6.8 TeV per beam. So it is at about 13.6 TeV, where the machine is supposed to only be capable of 15 TeV or trillion volts. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're causing this proton storm and using the sun as the quote-unquote cover for this storm. And I say that because every time they turn it off, the proton storm dissipates or starts heading down. And every time they turn it on, the proton storm increases in strength. And when they have it on full power, we see very, very sharp increases in power. The other thing is, is the two flares don't match up to any spikes in the proton storm whatsoever. I believe it to just be cover, and it could just be them manipulating the models at NOAA. Let me know what you think, guys. But, hey, I've been watching this now for about 20 hours, and all signs point to this experiment causing this proton storm and this polar cap absorption event, which can't be any good for humans. Everyone tells us they're trying to well, open the abyss here. I don't like that they're into instantaneous luminosity. That doesn't sound like what they should be headed towards if they're experimenting with proton physics. And I find it laughable that we're in a huge proton S2 proton storm while CERN is experiencing or experimenting with proton physics again. God bless. Let me know what you think in the comments below. You probably think I'm crazy, but hey, the data doesn't lie. Please share, please subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible. Bizarro world.